Hello, I'm Sean Joffreon, your new Fine Arts Director for East Baton Rouge Parish Schools. And I'm excited to announce our new program on Cox Channel 21, Center Stage. See, that's an example. You forced me to play football. This program will showcase the artistic talent that we have throughout the district. We will feature talented students and dynamic teachers in schools throughout the parish. a front row seat and tune in to center stage with EBR. You'll be glad you did. EBR, we got the arts. Hey, we got all some kids and they smart. Hey, we're making a difference, I know. Hey, so just watch the show through my flow. Hey, center stage, that's where it's at. Make a permanent march on the world like a tat. Hello and welcome to Center Stage in EBR Schools. Today we are excited to have our first episode of Center Stage in EBR. And we could not start the show without the best superintendent in the world, Mr. Warren Drake. So we thank you for being a part of the show today. Mr. Joe Ferron, thank you for inviting me. I think this is an exciting project we're doing this year. I'm, I'm, and I'm excited about it too as well. And it's also exciting to be in this beautiful theater that the taxpayers made possible for us here at McKinley Middle School. I have seen many a beautiful act uh, here on this stage and in this theater. It's been amazing. It the is. students at McKinley Middle have been awesome. It is. And now this theater is actually called the Lynn Whitfield Theater. Two years ago we had the opportunity with the help of Mr. Drake to call this uh, beautiful theater after someone who grew up in this area in South Baton Rouge, actress Lynn Whitfield. And she came here and we had a phenomenal time. It was unbelievable. I, I was just blown away by her generosity. Yes. And her just, uh, just the realness of, of her yes. visiting with the kids and the parents. And it was an amazing day. It was, it was. So just a few quick questions for you because a lot of people may not know, Mr. Drake, that you are an artist in your own right. When Mr. Drake was interviewing me for this job and he was asking me certain, certain things, I began to get a new found respect for him because Mr. Drake is truly more than what you see. <laughs> he's truly a creative person and he knows what he, he likes creatively and artistically. So I wanna know, and I guess the, the, the viewing audience would like to know too as well, what are your feelings and your thoughts concerning the arts in EBR schools? Well, I. I I started what we call AAA, which was academics, arts, and athletics. Arts are a critical part of the success for our students, absolutely. I grew up in a little small town in North Louisiana. The band director there, the school was so small that the band director and the football coach fought for kids and they finally got together and just said, let's do it together. So actually at halftime of the football games, the, the guys would take their shoulder pads off, pick up their instruments and go out and play on the field. Wow. He had a hundred member band in a school that only had 300 kids in the whole school, K-12. Wow. So he, he was an amazing man and he, he led me to understand and to respect and appreciate the arts. Mm -hmm. So I started off playing a guitar, never went too far. Uh -huh. I played a baritone uh -huh. in the band for a while. I, I, I'm not an expert on that. I sing really well in the shower. Well, I was about to say, <laughs> do you in, want to do it now? <laughs> yeah. uh, in church on Sunday, I am amazing. But I, I know the value of, of uh, what the arts, right. just all different genres of the arts right. do for our kids. Right. And I love uh, seeing our kids move forward in the arts, whether it's vocal, whether it's instrumental, whether it's uh, creating a, a 
pottery piece right. or just on, on canvas. Right. And being a principal and going to other schools and visiting and talking to other principals in other schools, it's exciting to see how the arts are integrated into the core because a lot of times you'll see those two teachers working together and bringing both to the area too as well. You, you know, see one, that a lot. Yeah, one of the things we've wanted to do is to get teachers out of silos mm -hmm. and, and make them and help them collaborate with each other. So if you're working on a project in science, you can, you can integrate the arts in that. Right, you can, you most can do definitely. It. And so I, I think that our teachers have done that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm so proud of them. I think that's why our scores are growing. Right. And so uh, whether it's math, science, English, social studies, whatever it is, you can integrate the arts into those subjects in a way that uh, kids of all different kinds mm -hmm. can appreciate. How do you feel about this weekly program coming to the city, into the, di into the district, to let them see what we have to offer here well, I, I in think, EBR? I think, uh, I don't know that we do a good enough job, and I'm going to tell you that because you're always moving forward, right. Right? right? And I think we've got a real good base right now to showcase what we have in EBR. Yeah. Uh, we have an amazing uh, array of talent, not only in the student body, but in the, in the uh, instructional uh, leaders. Mm -hmm. We have Emmy Award winning teachers. Yes, we do. We have nationally acclaimed opera singers mm -hmm. who travel the world. Mm -hmm. Those are our instructors. Mm -hmm. And when you, when, you, uh, when you combine that with, with the, the print people, we have Cartoon Man at McKinley High we School. Do. I mean, we have some, some amazing leaders who are, who are helping our kids first off. But when I see the product that comes out, we have, actually have a superintendent's art gallery in the main office. Mm -hmm. And if you walk through there and look at that art gallery, you're going to see high, high quality work. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, I just think we, we are going to showcase more of what we have. And this program is yes. going to be able to do that. Hopefully we can get it on the Channel 21 or something yes. in, in downtown Baton Rouge where everybody in Baton Rouge can see yes. the beautiful things we have going on in the field of arts. Because it, it's a lot and I wasn't aware of how much stuff we offer right. in the district artistically and the opportunities that kids can have in our schools that's free where you don't have to pay for an Emmy winning award instructor or a nationally acclaimed singer to actually teach the children here in EBR's district. People don't realize the resources we have available right. to us and the convocation coming up on August 8th is going to showcase our student talent mm -hmm. uh, in jazz and, and uh, it's just going to be an amazing opportunity for them to showcase to 5,500 employees. Right, right. Pretty awesome opportunity. It is, it <laughs> is. Now, just one fun question for you Mr. Drake. What's your favorite art form, if you have one? If you have more than one, you can tell us about it. And who's your favorite artist? Well, I, I, I grew up listening to all kinds of different music. Uh -huh. And when my kids came along, and they, they really got into the, the, uh, the, the rap, and the, I, I, I can tell you, I like all kinds of music. Uh -huh. I listen to all kinds of music. Uh -huh. Uh, my nickname when I was principal at Terra High School was Dr. Dre. <laughs> so Dr. Dre was beginning. That's how uh -huh. long he's been around, uh -huh. Uh -huh. back in the 90s. Uh -huh. And so they nicknamed me Dr. Dre. Uh -huh. And every morning on the uh, PA system, I would come on and I would say some, uh, some funny things with them. And uh, con country, country Manor, I think, was right. the song back then. Uh -huh. or country, I can't remember the last part of it, but it, it was one of my favorite rap uh -huh. songs. Uh -huh. But I'm a old time country music lover. Really? I listen to, in my truck every day, I listen to Willie's Roadhouse uh -huh. out, of, out of Austin, uh -huh. Texas. Uh -huh. And I, I guess if I had just had to pick one, and I have so many really great artists I love, uh -huh. but if I had to pick one, it would probably be Patsy Cline. Oh, yeah. You can't go wrong with Patsy, Patsy Cline. Patsy Cline, I love co old country music. Uh -huh. uh, they, they just, it just really. And of course, my wife and kids, when they get in the car, they uh -huh. go, uh-uh, that's got to go. <laughs> so I turn it to the Aretha Franklin uh -huh. uh, music. So I love soul music. Uh -huh. I love jazz. Uh -huh. I love to see, I love to see a, an orchestra play. Uh -huh. And so uh -huh. I, I, there's nothing I don't like. Oh, so you're eclectic, I would call it, because you, you, you like a little bit of everything. I do listen to all kind of different uh, genres of music. I, but I love the also the, the, uh, the print art. Mm -hmm. I love sculpture. I, Mm -hmm. I've been to the Louvre, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been to uh, 
Florence, Italy, and Rome. I've seen this. I've stood next to the Statue of David. Wow. As close as we are sitting. Right. I've seen the Mona Lisa uh -huh. up close. Uh -huh. I've seen some really uh, incredible art uh, objects all over the world. Wow. And so I've, I've come to be able to appreciate the arts. See what I tell you? Mr. Drake has more creativity in his, in his heart and in his mind and in his soul than what you, that, well, more than what I thought because I thought all Mr. Drake thought about was just educating kids, but he is truly creative in everything he does. I wanna thank you, Mr. Drake, for coming today. Hopefully this will not be your last visit to our show. And I will come by any time. I think we this can, is a great idea. Oh yes, and we can showcase all the wonderful talent that we have in EBR schools. Absolutely. We thank you for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Joe Brown. Also on today's show, we are so excited to have school board member Miss Evelyn Ware Jackson. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you, Mr. Jones? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm so excited about the new year with the job that I actually have now, but also being able to play a part in seeing arts throughout the entire district. Yes, indeed. That, that is a thrill for me. It is. It's, it's, well, it definitely is for me. So getting to the show and what we're doing this year, we're going to do a lot of stuff to showcase schools in EBR and show what they really have to offer the kids here. And there is a whole lot that you may not be aware of. So in the show this season, what would you like to see from Center Stage? Well, first of all, I'm just so excited that we are going to do this finally in EBR. And uh, I appreciate your vision. I, I so appreciate your vision because uh, this is something that I had spoken about years ago mm -hmm. and uh, it, it just never came to life. Uh -huh. So I'm excited that it's coming to life now uh -huh. and that we're gonna be able to feature um, student artwork yes. and, uh, and our teacher's talent. I'm hoping to see that. And because um, we have so many very, very talented teachers we do. in our district and they're multi-talented. Yes. You know, they may do one thing in as a profession, uh, for instance, we, we um, like they may teach French uh -huh. and um, and be a visual artist. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's there's so much talent that we can showcase, it's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And being a principal in the district and actually working with teachers, and you're right, there were English teachers who wanted to work with the art teachers, or they were beautiful singers, so they wanted to work with the choir teachers. So. Mm -hmm. Teachers have so many talents, and it's because they had the opportunities to have arts in the school to get them to the appreciation of, or just to develop the talents that they have within themselves. Yeah. And that we can see a lot in our schools here in Baton Rouge too as well. Also, what would you like citizens to know? And I think you pretty much answered it, but if you can just go a little more into detail about our schools as far as the arts go. Because some people don't realize what we actually offer as far as the realm of arts that we have, even down to digital arts and to sculpture and all of those things. What would you like the viewing audience to know too as well? Anything else you want to elaborate on? Well, I think that anything that a family would want their child to be involved in, in mm -hmm. the arts, can be found in EBR schools. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of finding out exactly where it is, mm -hmm. you know, because we, we've got so much all over the place mm -hmm. in EBR. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm so looking forward to um, reaching out to uh, other groups. Yes. Um, for instance, uh, like we, we have so many different art partners. We do. In the schools, from Manship Theater to the Arts Council mm -hmm. to um, What's the group that the the, the group that does the kids orchestra? Kids orchestra. Kids orchestra oh, yes. and uh, uh, of moving colors. Uh -huh. You know uh -huh. that's an, a phenomenal group there. Uh -huh. um, that is not that well known uh -huh. in the schools, but they do recruit from all over the district, all over the parish, not right. just in EBR, to do a beautiful um, a beautiful. Um, performance over mm -hmm. at Manship. I think it's in at the end of the year or in January, and they offer scholarships wow. to, to our kids to, uh -huh. to, um, to participate. 
and uh, it's it's just phenomenal. I'm looking forward to, to seeing that. I am too as well. And the benefits that you can get from all the organizations in Baton Rouge is phenomenal for the kids in EBR too yes. as well. Yes. So if you're listening, you're an organization that's out there and you have an art form in which you want to support, showcase, or help enhance at the schools of EBR, please just by all means get in touch with me, Sean Joffreon at sjoffreon at ebrschools.org. You can go on the website, see Miss Evelyn Ware Jackson, because she is truly an artist at heart who loves and eats and breathes art. So if you have that opportunity, please email her as well, and she'll get it to me. And trust me, when it comes to anything dealing with the arts, Miss Miss Jackson, she is on top of it. So we thank you for coming today, and hopefully this will not be your last visit. Well, I hope not. I hope not, because we, we just have so much talent in the district. It's, it's unbelievable, and uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing more of these shows. And, uh, you know, I just wish you the best. Oh, thank you. With this. I know thank you're, you. you're going to do a phenomenal job. Yes, I'm going to try my best. Position. I'm going to try my best, because I'm, as you, I love everything about the arts. So hold on, coming right back, we will have four phenomenal teachers who teach in art departments in East Baton Rouge Parish on Center Stage. And welcome back to Center Stage with EBR Schools. Today, we are happy to have four talented individuals that play a big part in our school district as well as certain schools here in EBR. So I'm gonna allow them at this time to introduce themselves and tell us where they are. And if there's anything else that you want us to know about you, please tell us that as well. So we'll start right here with this lovely young lady. Hello, hello. I am Roxy Victorian and I am the dance division director at McKinley Middle School. Wow. All right, I'm Andy Pizzo, director of bands over at Sherwood Middle Academic Magnet School. Quaja Bell, visual and sculptural art here at McKinley Middle. Shane Stewart, Talented Theater, McKinley Middle, and this is my home. Oh, so we have great teachers here, but I think they're being a little modest when they're telling you about, about themselves, because a lot of, well, all of them are award-winning teachers in East Baton Rouge Parish Schools, award-winning art teachers. Some are even national winners of awards. Who wants to talk about their awards and those big accomplishments that you've done? Mr. Pizzo, I know you just finished one that we saw uh, at a school board meeting a few months ago. Yes, uh, at the beginning of last school year, my jazz ensemble program over at Sherwood was recognized as a National Jazz Ensemble Award winner. It was a national recording music competition. We applied for, sent it in, and we placed in the top two in the country. So that was quite an honor for us. We travel, we do a lot of touring over at the school. We just uh, got back from Festival Disney in Orlando earlier this year and uh, we came out first in the country. So we like to put the kids on the street, put the kids on the road, experience, you know, and gather those, uh, those moments, you know, right, to right. send them on to the next level. But that's, ph build. that's phenomenal to say that it's a middle school that right. has done that. That right. says a lot, that says a lot. Mr. Stewart? Uh, well, we are currently back-to-back -back state champs in uh, duet acting at the uh, Despian Festival at the state level. Uh -huh. um, last year, I had two students, they're at Baton Rouge High now, but they went on to Nebraska, to Lincoln, Nebraska, where they host the, the national Despian Festival, and we actually won the whole thing, which is amazing, but it's also even more amazing because it's a high school competition, and they were eighth graders, and they won it. This year, we did really well. We got superiors. We went back to Lincoln, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. um, didn't quite make it all the way, but mm -hmm. they did really good. They still beat out at least two thirds of the high school competition. Right, but they they won the state. They did win state. They beat all the high schools in the state. Correct. These two middle school boys. Correct. Correct. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. So anybody else want to talk about the accolades? You know you have some accolades. Well, we are we are we're doing a lot of exciting things at McKinley Middle, but what? Um, is most exciting and most recent is that last year we were awarded the first school in the parish as the National Honor Society for Dance Arts and so we now have a National Honor Society here at McKinley Middle so 
6th through 8th graders will use that track and graduate with honors in dance in the same way that you graduate with honors in Spanish or French or math. Oh, or, so it's, it's really a, a wonderful accomplishment for the program and we had to submit a curriculum and curriculum samples and things like that to be recognized. Only the second one in the state and the first middle school program. Wow. wow. So you should have something big at the school. We should. Stating we should. That. We should definitely do that. Yeah. Nice that. band. Yeah. And what about in art, Ms. Bell? Because I know being your principal last year, there were always kids winning awards. Well, every other week, it yes. seems as <laughs> if they were winning something in the art program. Well, the arts here at McKinley, multiple regional awards, um, local art competitions, our kids go on to do some amazing things in the high schools as well. I can't speak only for myself. We have three art teachers mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So everyone pulls together to make all of these things happen all around that. Yeah. I wish we really could get it out because there are so many amazing things that we do in our schools. And then we have the opportunity to have programs for parents. And it's just the parents who see these amazing presentations, yeah, mm -hmm. presentations right. that yeah. we offer. I just wish we can get it out more. So hopefully we can do that through the show here. Uh, that's, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I was going to say this is a, a wonderful start. I'm so yeah. excited me about too. the venue to <laughs> promotion <laughs> opportunities. Yeah. Right. So tell me this. I would like to know what made you uh, who you are as far as the artist that you are and how did you become the teacher? Was it, did it mesh together? Like for me it was, I wanted to be two things in the world growing up. I wanted to be an actor and I wanted to be a teacher. So I was like, okay, this beam came up, of light came and said, okay, I'll just major in education and just teach dr drama. But it was still a piece of me, you know, that wanted to do something else. So how did you get where you are today? I was actually having this conversation with my husband the other day because we were talking about middle school. My son is entering the sixth grade this coming year. And I was telling him how some of the most monumental events in my life happened in middle school. Wasn't the most awesome time in my life, <laughs> but a lot of things that really stuck with me, um, and especially when it came to work ethic, what I liked and what I was gonna stick with, I learned a lot of that in middle school. and. It was really instructors that I had and experiences that I had that kind of molded me as an artist. I remember I was in the seventh grade and I got my first tap dance solo in a large production during the summer. And it was a pretty intense solo. I went home every day in my mom's garage and I worked on that solo. And it was one of those moments where I discovered what I had. You know, mm -hmm. I remember when my son was running track um, a couple of years ago, I would yell at him on the sidelines and he'd say, Mama, when you yell at me, it makes me nervous and it makes me feel like you don't think I'm giving all that I can. And so I asked him, I said, well, when I yell at you, do you find you have a little bit more to give? And he was like, yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> but it was that moment in my life where I found out how much I had to give. And I think that's what a lot of our, our students experience. Mm -hmm. So much of who I am as an artist and a teacher comes from those monumental experiences as a child that I held on to, those mm -hmm. moments of joy. And I knew I wanted to be a dancer. I didn't know I wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. My mom was a teacher and I was running from all things that looked mm -hmm. like my mom at one point. But once I got in the classroom, there was a sense of joy. Um, that I experienced in the classroom that I hadn't anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how it developed for me. Yeah, I wanted to be two things as well when I was growing up. I wanted to be a musician and a baseball player. <laughs> I gave up on the musician thing pretty quick. What about, I, the baseball? what about the baseball player? I, you know, that's, that's the, the story. I played baseball from the time I was five years old all the way up to my senior year. I actually have a couple of state championships. But no, I never knew all these years you were a baseball player. I did player. not start anything with theater until my senior year. We, I didn't have an arts at my school, so we did a senior play. And we did Wizard of Oz, and uh, I played the lion in it. And I, I did too in my senior year. I <laughs> Everybody plays the lion sooner or later. Um, but the the person that it's it's really strange. But the person who was really instrumental in getting me started in the theater was my physics teacher. Wow. He came up to me after the play, and you know I never really had any conversations with him. And he pulled me aside and he said, 
you know, you're pretty good at this. You should try doing something with that in college. And that so, goes back to what Ms. Ware Jackson said earlier, how we have so many teachers in our own district who are artistic in a sense, yeah. who bring you out yeah. that are not right. even the true in art teachers. teachers. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. right. And so I started taking college classes after that, just taking like intro to acting to see what it was like. And then I just went crazy and never <laughs> stopped. And I've been doing it ever since. Wow. So, so uh, what about for you, Mr. Pizzo? I had, I had some great teachers in my younger days. You know, my middle school, I'm not that old, I'm really not. <laughs> <laughs> 21 looks good, right? <laughs> So my middle school uh, band director was always, you know, he was a fine educator, performer, entertainer. High school gentleman, same idea, performer, educator. Then I got to LSU and studied with world renowned performers and educators. So it kind of became ingrained in me that I could teach and perform and entertain and live the best of both worlds, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the classroom, mm -hmm. then the nightlife mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. however you have you. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's been great for me and it's allowed me to perform all over the country. I've performed in Vegas, I've performed in New York. It's been some great opportunities. A different side of the stage being up here, performing in front of small audiences as, as large as thousands and thousands of people when you do the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage mm -hmm. Festival on the main stage. Great opportunities, you know, but then you take those opportunities and bring them back to the classroom. Mm -hmm. That's what it has allowed me to right. do. So my kids get to study with a lot of the guys that I perform with. I perform locally, uh, you know, with a group, I have to do a little plug called Fat Hat. You know, so it's a funk soul R&B band you can oh. see me play with. And, so but a lot of those too? opportunities. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Where, where the website. The you, can, you can always, you can always <laughs> the check the website, check us out. But there's a lot of great things that those opportunities allow me to bring into right. the classroom. Okay. And that's the great thing for my kids is they get to see the professionals. Right. And it's like an artisan residency program right. and they get a lot of different experiences. So that's worked for me and I'm just now giving back in my career. Wow. wow. So what about for you, Ms. Bill? Well, mine is really close to home. Uh -huh. um, I'm a graduate of Broadmoor High School. And Lori Johnson, who is still the art teacher there, is a ceramist as well. And she gave me the freedom to explore clay like I'd never explored it. Wow. I was one, the only student that she taught to use the pottery wheel. I was someone that she trusted to do many things inside that classroom. And it just fed into my creativity. My grandmother was a second grade school teacher and I grew up beside her with her lesson plan book all <laughs> spread out. And my grandfather was the administrator of a vocational school. So I got to watch his administrative side. I got to watch my grandmother's second grade patience with students. Um, my mom's a nurse, so that's a little different um, caring, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I do. it is <laughs> a small world. Um, <clears throat> But it, it fed that creativity that just over time blossomed into me wanting to make sure the kids knew that arts are always there, that they will feed that, that everything that you have, everything from math to science and right. reading. It's, it's very cross-curricular. It's very cross-curricular. It's all in there. So I've always been there. And EBR helped me, just it guided it along. Well, you see, now what we have to offer, these are just for teachers in the art forms of what we have in East Baton Rouge. And we're gonna see many, many more, and hopefully we'll have this same group, probably the next segment, hopefully, uh, or the next program, to come back and talk about some other things, our other interests, so you can see the type of teachers, the cool art teachers that we have here in East Baton Rouge Parish Schools. We thank you for today, and we can't wait to see you come back next week in your front row seat at Center Stage in EBR.